For today's video we're going to take a look at a 1971 Olivetti Prima 20 mechanical adding machine. In part 1 we looked at the restoration of the Olivetti. I'll put a link to that video in the description. In this episode we'll demonstrate the machine and have a look at some of its features. So, having completed the restoration of the Olivetti, I think it's now time for a demonstration. If I want to add £12.99, pence, I type it into the keyboard, pull the handle, and that prints it out and adds it into the accumulator. If I now want to add to that £14.50, pence, I type that in, and again pull the handle, and that adds that into the accumulator. If I want to see a subtotal, I pull down on this lever, pull the handle again, and it prints a subtotal of £27.49 in red. If I now want to carry on adding to that, I can type in another number of £14.51, pull the handle again, and that prints it out and adds it to the accumulator. If I now want to see a grand total, I push up on this lever, pull the handle again, and it prints the grand total of £42 in red, and it also clears the accumulator ready for another sum. Looking at the keyboard itself, it's a fairly standard 10 key entry pad with the additional double zero and a half pence. You'll notice as I type in a number, this indicator moves to the left to show you that you've actually entered the number into the thing. If you've made a mistake but you haven't pulled the handle yet, you can clear the current number by pushing that lever up there. By default, the machine is in currency mode, so if I type in 1299, and pull the handle, it'll print out as 12.99. If I want that as a whole number without the decimal places, I can again type in 1299, but then hit the WN or whole number button, and now it'll print out as 1299. If I want to print out a number, such as a customer's account number, I can use the non-add button here, so I move that to the left, put in the account number, and pull the handle, and now it'll print out with a triangle symbol next to it to show that it's a non-added number. If I want to do subtraction, first I have to add something into the accumulator to subtract from. So I'll put in 999.99 and pull the handle and that'll add that into the accumulator. Now, if I want to subtract from that £557.99, I'll put in 557.99, move the button over to the right, pull the lever, and that'll have subtract that amount. If I want to do a series of subtractions, I move the button to the right and lock it in place with the lever here. And now I can take away from that £100, that's £100, and pull the lever. And if I now want to take from that £300, so £300, and again pull the lever, and now if I unlatch the subtraction lock here, and move it up to the grand total, pull the lever, and we have remaining £42. If I want to do some multiplication, let's say I want to multiply £146 by 5, so I'll put in 14600, and then I'll lock the multiplication lever using this lever here, and now I can just pull the handle five times, so one, two, three, four, five, and hit the grand total, and that gives me £730. Now if I want to multiply that £146 by 324, I don't need to pull the handle 324 times. I just, in the first column, pull the handle four times, so one, two, three, four, and then I add a naught and pull the handle twice, so one, two, and then add another naught and pull it three times. And now go for the grand total, pull the handle, and we've got £47,304. If I now want to clear what's in the input register, I just release the multiplication lock lever and press the input register reset lever here and we're back to zero again. There are a series of markings that will appear next to the printed numbers, depending on what function is being printed. So, if I put in an account number for someone, and put it into the non-add position, and pull the handle, you'll see the number appears with a little triangle next to it. If I show a subtotal, and pull the handle, you'll see there's a little diamond appears next to the number. And if I go for a grand total, 
a little asterisk appears next to the number. If I want to subtract a number or put in a negative number, I'll put that in and pull the handle with it over on the minus position and it will show a minus next to the number. The maximum amount of characters you can enter in the keyboard is 9. So if I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and pull the handle, everything's good, it prints out normally. But if I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and then one extra character, that's too many and it will print with an E next to the number to show there's an error. Equally, if I inadvertently press the half at the same time as another key, that input won't work and it will print with an E next to it to show there's been an error. If I'm doing subtractions, so let's say I enter £100 and add that into the accumulator and now I want to subtract from that £99, so 99 and subtract that and now I take away another three pounds from that, that'll end up with a minus figure and you'll notice a little flag will appear on the left of this display here to show that it's gone into a minus figure. If I now release the subtraction lock and put it back to the center and add in four pounds, the flag will disappear showing we're back into positive figures. Looking at the back of the machine, at the moment the printer paper is engaged with the platen roller in the normal manner, but if you lift up this side of the printer roll holder, it releases the paper from the platen roller, so you can either square it up or just remove it like that. On the other side of the paper roll holder, it's spring-loaded, so you can release the paper roll. Looking at the printer assembly itself, if I type in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and pull the handle and then release it really slowly, you'll see the racks that drive the printer wheels move up the corresponding amount of clicks. So at the far end you've got the 1, 2, 3 and so on, up to 9 here where the rack is fully extended. And then when that rack, after it's printed, returns back to its start position, it clicks onto the accumulator the appropriate amount of turns so the accumulator gathers the number that's been printed. This process is reversed when you go for a subtotal or total. So if I pull the handle and then let it go slowly, the racks will be engaged with the accumulator and then they will move up the appropriate amount to drive the print wheels to the same setting that is held in the accumulator. Like that. The styling of the case is quite futuristic for 1971 with its angular design and of course it has square keys just to show how modern it is. I think that'll do for this video. If you've enjoyed watching feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. There'll be more vintage stuff and repairs coming soon. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in a future video.